Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Every economist who have to face the poverty problem try hardly to alleviate the poverty and so the poverty and how the government to handle that always be intriguing topic to be discussed. I am Angelina Ikarautami from Sugio Pranoto Catholic University, Indonesia, from Faculty of Economic and Business. Want to share you about my study, the, st the study entitled The Impact of Economic Openness and Growth on Poverty Alleviation in Indonesia. Okay, as we know, the poverty is a big problem for developing countries. Apart from the various poverty reduction strategies commonly used, one interesting approach to poverty reduction is economic openness. Economic openness will encourage economic growth, which would increase public welfare and finally believe to reduce the poverty. Theoretically, the openness can uh, the openness can reduce poverty, although empirically the results are ambiguous. And uh, we want to talk about the data in Indonesia. Indonesia experiences the challenges of openness and globalization. Since 2000, Indonesia has been recording consistent trade surplus due to the robust export growth. Indonesia also has a good track record on poverty alleviation strategies, but until now still experiences income disparity and poverty in urban and rural areas. Poverty remain an ingrained problem in Indonesia, despite its success in cutting the poverty rate to single digit level in 2019. Okay, so based on this phenomena, based on this fact in Indonesia, the study objective are describing the condition of poverty and economic openness in Indonesia, and then I want to analyze how economic openness and growth in Indonesia have contributed to its poverty reduction. So now we want to jump to the literature review. Some literature reviews show about the definition of poverty and the correlation between poverty reduction and economic openness. There are various definitions of poverty, from the simple indicators to more complex and comprehensive indicator. You can see the World Bank, AMES, UNDP, and BAPNAS. In general, people are categorized as poor if and only if they do not have sufficient income to meet a certain welfare level. And how about the argument about the correlation between economic growth and poverty. There are two arguments. First, economic growth is a significant. So only the targeted policies to increase growth can reduce the poverty. And second, only policies that succeed in reducing poverty can produce higher aggregate growth. And how about the correlation between trade and poverty reduction? Theoretically, trade can influ influence poverty reduction through two paths, macroeconomics and microeconomics. In macroeconomics, trade affect economic growth and will be beneficial to the poor. While in microeconomic, trade affects poverty through the impact on household behavior. The study used the secondary data from 2000 
2018. And I use the variable R, poverty headcount index, gross domestic product, trade openness. This trade openness is measured by net export divided by GDP, export divided by GDP, and import divided by GDP, foreign direct investment, government expenditure, and Gini coefficient. The model is estimated by error correction model and developed from Sai and Huang papers and POSFEH paper. So you can see the poverty is a function of GDP, export to GDP, import to GDP, FDI to GDP, government expenditure, and Gini coefficient. If we use the um, error correction model, so we need to, uh, to test first about DF and ADF. So we can choose, we can decide it, we can use the error correction model or not. And what about the hypothesis? The hypothesis is the export FDI and economic growth is generally conducive to poverty reduction in short and long run. Because we use the error correction model, so can uh, so we can get the indicators of long and short run condition. Uh, import has a negative impact on poverty in the long run. After all, the import can jeopardize job creation. And then the Gini coefficient has a negative effect on poverty. So this is the discussion and result about economic openness condition. Indonesia trade balance from year to year mark the Indonesian economy openness. Indonesia trade balance experienced a deficit in some years, but most of trade balance is the surplus. You can give an attention on that table. So you can see uh, Indonesia trade balance experienced the deficit on 2020, 13, 14, and 18. Okay. On the other side, the value of foreign direct investment net inflows in 2019 amounted to 23.56 billion US dollar. The increasing of interest of foreign investor caused the FDI to increase. And then, this is the regression result. After the test DF and augmented DF on the level and first difference, we found all variables co-integrated at the first difference level. So the study can use the error correction model. Because we use the error correction model, so we can find the short run indicators and the long run indicators. There are two significant variables in the short run, export to GDP and import to GDP. If the ratio of export to GDP, you can see uh, at the table below, this one. If the ratio of export to GDP rise by 1%, poverty will increase by 0.8% because Indonesian export growth tends to be stagnant. So if the GDP falls on average, it will drive poverty to increase. And an increase in the ratio of import to GDP would reduce poverty by 0.47%. And honestly, unfortunately, FDI does not significantly affect 
poverty reduction in Indonesia because the uh, net capital inflow in Indonesia bring a very high technology so maybe uh, the poor household can join with this uh, chance and what about the long run condition in the long run condition the export to GDP variable no longer has a significant effect while import to GDP still have a significant impact. An increase of uh, import to GDP ratio by 1% will reduce the poverty by 0.18%. Uh, this is, I think this is, uh, this, is, this is smaller than in the short run condition. And then in the long run, the role of government is very significant. The increase of government spending by 1% will reduce poverty by 0.3%. So the results show that government has a massive role in reducing poverty. This is the, the data, this is the fact that uh, poverty in Indonesia is depend on the strategy that government will. Poverty reduction program purpose to meet basic needs, improve socioeconomic condition, and improve poor family welfare. Indonesia also has three cluster program. Uh, cluster one is an integrated family-based social assistance program. Cluster two is the community development poverty alleviation programs. And cluster three is the micro-enterprise empowerment poverty alleviation program so the poverty policies in indonesia support this finding of my study and now we come to the conclusion the first conclusion is a significant result in this study is that fdi both in short and long term is not a factor that reduces poverty. And in the short term, the ratio of export and import to GDP has a significant effect on poverty reduction. So I think the government, the Indonesian government, need to give more attention about trade balance because trade balance in Indonesia in the short run can support the uh, poverty reduction strategies. And the last one, in the long run, this is the very important thing. The government spending has a significant impact. So government role until now still to be the primary strategies to alleviate poverty in Indonesia. That's all of my study. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope uh, this simple study can give you more comprehensive view about the poverty alleviation in Indonesia. Don't be hesitant if you want to discuss or asking something about this study. Thank you very much and see you on the next presentation. Bye-bye.